In the grip of the Canada Arm 2, the SpaceX Dragon is ready to depart the space station, having arrived on March 9, 2020, with over 4,300 pounds of cargo. Today, you're watching the final robotic operation for a SpaceX Dragon, their 20th commercial resupply mission to the space station, and wrapping up the CRS-1 contract. Welcome to the International Space Station Flight Control Room. We're actually broadcasting live from the White Flight Control Room, where the Orbit 1 team is currently on console. I'm, in Le I'm NASA's Leah Cheshire, and we are in this control room today as we're being proactive about protecting the flight control teams against the coronavirus. A couple of weeks ago, we began switching f between flight control rooms for every other shift, so each room could be deep cleaned daily as a precautionary measure between the shifts and that support of the International Space Station will never stop. The space station is currently flying 263 statute miles over Ukraine. And as we mentioned, you are tuned in to the departure of SpaceX's 20th commercial resupply mission to the International Space Station, the end of the CRS-1 contract. Here you've got a look at the SpaceX flight control room in Hawthorne, California, where teams are monitoring the Dragon, currently still attached to the Candid Arm 2 on the space station. Earlier this morning, flight controllers here unbolted the spacecraft from its position on the Harmony module, where it has been since arrived on March 9th, and they slowly moved the Candid Arm 2 into its release position, where it now currently awaits release, scheduled for 8.06 a.m. Central Time. When Dragon departs today, it will bring with it over 4,000 pounds of critical science and other hardware. It's scheduled for a safe splashdown in the Pacific Ocean at 1.50 p.m. Central Time. It'll be the final splashdown in that location for Dragon. As we mentioned, this being the end of the CRS-1 contract, SpaceX and Dragon will move into the CRS-2 contract next. So this is the last time we'll see this style of Dragon. The next will be uh, similar to the style of the Crew Dragon spacecraft. Those solar array wings that you see will instead be wrapped around the trunk of the spacecraft down toward the bottom. And in the future, it will dock to the International Space Station and release on its own as well. So this will be the last robotic operation for this spacecraft. Additionally, it will no longer splash down in the Pacific Ocean in the future, but instead it will splash down in the Atlantic Ocean, east of Central Florida. Today, the command for the Canada Arm 2 to release Dragon uh, will originate from flight controllers here on the ground. That command can be sent from either the astronauts aboard the station or the ground team. So while the command won't come from the on-orbit crew today, NASA astronaut Drew Morgan will be standing by in the cupola module and monitoring the spacecraft departure. When you hear astronaut Drew Morgan speaking, he'll be talking with capsule communicator Brandon Lloyd here in uh, our flight control room. And the teams today, the Orbit 1 team, is led by Rebecca Wingfield. The visiting vehicle officer this morning is David Harshman. He's in communication with the flight control team in Hawthorne, California that we saw earlier. He's keeping tabs on the Dragon spacecraft and communicating its status throughout mission control.
As we mentioned, we're looking for an on-time departure of about 8.06 a.m. Central Time this morning for Dragon. And once the command from the ground is sent, the snares on the spacecraft's uh, robotic arm latching end effector, which is essentially the hand of the robotic arm, you can see it there in the center of the SpaceX Dragon spacecraft, uh, the snares on that will open and we'll begin to see the separation of the vehicle. The spacecraft will start to slowly drift away and flight controllers here will begin to retract the arm. We'll see Dragon make a few small departure burns to get it into its proper position away from the station for its eventual deorbit burn, scheduled for about 12.58 p.m. Central Time today. That'll slow Dragon down enough to drop it out of orbit and send it toward its landing zone, slashing down at approximately 1.50 p.m. Central Time off the coast of Long Beach, California. the Dragon spacecraft you see today for the SpaceX 20 mission. This capsule was actually previously used in the launch of SpaceX's 10th and 16th commercial resupply missions, so this was its third flight to the International Space Station. And if you look closely below the P on the SpaceX emblazoned on side of the capsule, you will find two small, uh, what look like International Space Station tattoos. And that's to prove that the uh, space SpaceX Dragon has been to the space station two times before. The capsule you see today was part of SpaceX's first launch this year. It lifted off on March 6th at 10.50 p.m. Central Time, bringing over 4,300 pounds of cargo to the space station. It lifted off from Space Launch Complex 40 at NASA's Kennedy Space Center uh, at Cape Canaveral Air Force Station in Florida. And it was launched aboard the Falcon 9 rocket those nine first-stage Merlin engines sending the spacecraft into orbit, and about 12 minutes after launch, the solar arrays unfurled and began collecting power, sending it on its way to the space station. Dragon was then captured at 5.25 a.m. Central Time on March 9th by NASA astronaut Jessica Meir using the same Canada Arm-2 you see today as the astronaut was in the cupola module. After grapple of the spacecraft, control of the robotic arm was handed over to teams on the ground who brought the spacecraft to the station and repositioned it to ready it for berthing with the common berthing mechanism on the Earth-facing side of the space station's Harmony module. A large bulk of that over 4,300 pounds of cargo that was delivered to the space station were science investigations. That was over 2,116 pounds of the cargo that made its way to the space station. Another 1,032 pounds of cargo uh, that came aboard this spacecraft was the Bartolomeo platform, an experimental platform that will be attached to the outside of the Columbus module and allow for further scientific in investigations.
the International Space Station is currently flying 262 statute miles over China. And as you can see, it is getting a little bit darker outside. That's because the Space Station and Dragon are about to cross the Terminator line. That's an invisible line, but the difference between day and night, as the Space Station makes an orbit every 90 minutes, seeing about 16 sunrises and sunsets a day. We're about 10 minutes out from the scheduled release of Dragon this morning, and we discussed its departure burns and deorbit burn, but there are also a couple of milestones we'll see Dragon meet along the way. So first, those departure burns were, will fire, each uh, lasting not too long, less than 20 seconds, and then the Dragon itself will uh, cross the keep-out sphere. That's an invisible line around the station with about a 200-kilometer radius. Dragon will keep heading away from the station and will stand by until it makes its way out of the approach ellipsoid, another invisible line that's one kilometer by one kilometer by two kilometers around the space station. These invisible lines are where we have checkpoints for the vehicle as it is ascending to the space station. And they also help flight controllers uh, just govern the rules of the vehicles approaching and departing. As this flight is a major milestone for the SpaceX and NASA teams being the final of the CRS-1 contract, that results in 20 total Dragon missions berthed to the International Space Station, providing over 94,000 pounds of resupply cargo and 74,000 pounds of return cargo. Dragon is the only cargo capsule that can return payloads to Earth for us as it doesn't burn up in the atmosphere. Instead, it splashes down in the Pacific Ocean as it will later today and is recovered. This view of the white flight control room where the Orbit 1 team is currently on console, where we are currently in a TDRS handover. The vehicle is switching satellites and these are uh, constantly tracked and monitored and we will regain communication and, and uh, visuals from the International Space Station shortly. Here you've got a glimpse of the approach ellipsoid and the keep out sphere, those milestones that we talked about earlier that Dragon will move through on its way back to Earth. Some other uh, firsts of the Dragon CRS-1 contract. This was the first U.S. commercial provider to reuse a capsule, and nine out of the 20 missions used a reflown capsule. Three of those 20 were the third flight of a capsule like we see today with the SpaceX-20 Dragon capsule. SpaceX was also the first U.S. commercial provider to fly unpressurized cargo and the first to dispose of unpressurized cargo. Additionally, as we've seen several times, 
SpaceX is able to land their first stage boosters after launch, and so they are the first uh, U.S. government use of a reflown first stage booster. Station Houston, we're tracking for an on-time Dragon departure. Stand by for steps three and four of 1.602 to monitor for release. Okay, copy, and I'll expect that the next call from you will be uh, that you, the command has been sent. Concur. And you just heard Capcom or Capsule Communicator Brandon Lloyd speaking with NASA astronaut Drew Morgan standing by to monitor the departure of the SpaceX Dragon spacecraft. Everything checking out for an on-time departure coming up here in just a few minutes. With just a few minutes until departure, we have a question on Twitter uh, from BreezyGirl248. You can submit your questions using the hashtag AskNASA. She wants to know what the food supply on the space station looks like. This dragon itself arrived with several special food products, including some coffee, candy, uh, some cheese, and even some fresh food, which is especially special for the astronauts, including oranges, apples, grapefruits, and cherry tomatoes, even some fresh garlic. Station Houston, we're about one minute away. ISS thrusters are inhibited. Proceeding with release. Copy. 
Release commanded. As you heard, the release window is open and the release command has been sent to the Canada arm. Snares open, begin monitoring for drift out. Snares on the latching end effector are open and very shortly we'll see Dragon moving slowly away from the Canada arm too. And you can see that slow motion dragon now drifting away. Release of dragon occurring at 8.06 a.m. Eastern Central Time as the International Space Station was flying 260 statute miles east of Vietnam. Station on two, pin has exited the way. Houston copies. Proceeding to back away. Copy. Fly controllers here are now moving the Canada Arm 2 away from Dragon as it is now free flying. Again, that release coming at 8.06 a.m. Central Time as the space station was flying east of Vietnam. Back away is in progress. NASA astronaut Andrew Morgan standing by in the cupola module to monitor as the back away of the Canada Arm 2 is in progress. Next up for Dragon are those small departure burns, the first being five seconds long and changing Dragon's relative velocity to the station by a tenth of a meter per second. We'll be looking for that at 8.10 a.m. Central Time. Sensation on two, armed dragon, distance approximately one and a half meters. Houston copies. We'll be looking for that departure burn in just about a minute. Dragon now executing its first departure burn. Dragon depart commanded. Houston copies. That first departure burn completed successfully. The next will be about 12 seconds long. Backway is complete, and Dragon's departure burn one is complete. Departure burn two in less than one minute. 
Monitor per step five of 1.602. Copy, step five. Copy, step five. Step five. All of the movements for SpaceX's Dragon and the Canada Arm 2 are very slow and deliberate while around the space station. And departure burn two is complete, changing the relative velocity another 20th of a meter per second. Station Houston departure burn two is complete. Departure burn three in approximately seven minutes. Monitor per step six of 1.602. Copy for step six of 1.602. With departure burns one and two complete, everything looking good for Dragon. Station Houston, ISS thrusters are re-enabled. Next milestone for Dragon will be departure burn three, scheduled for 8.19 a.m. Central Time this morning. That burn will be about 22 seconds long and will change the relative velocity another three meters per second, speeding up Dragon's descent back to Earth today. We have a question about that from Jack Rion, who wants to know how long does it take Dragon to splash down from release? Today, Dragon was released at 8.06 a.m. Central Time, and it will approximately splash down around 1.50 p.m. Central Time in the Pacific Ocean. So we're looking at about six hours today from release to splash down. Looking for departure burn three for Dragon in about four minutes.
just a few minutes away from that departure burn three. We have a question from Mel Pitts with the hashtag AskNASA on Twitter. She wants to know if the solar arrays are folded and returned to be used again. The solar arrays are attached to the trunk of the dragon, and those will actually burn up upon reentry into the Earth's atmosphere. The only portion that will return of dragon is the capsule itself, bringing with it about 4,000 pounds of cargo and science and other hardware back to Earth. Radiation Rover asks if this is a farewell to the first gen dragon, and it is. Uh, speaking of the solar arrays, they will actually be folded around the trunk of the dragon capsule, um, moving toward the second generation body of spacecraft. The dragon used in the CRS-2 missions will resemble the Crew Dragon and will also automatically dock to the space station rather than require robotic operations. Departure burn three is now in progress. This burn is about 22 seconds long and moving Dragon out of the keep out sphere and approach ellipsoid much faster, another three meters per second being added. Station Houston, departure burn three is complete and Dragon is outside the keep out sphere. Copy all. That was the last time the arm and Dragon will meet that way, so it's fun to watch. Absolutely. I looked it up in the first official uh, CRS-1 Dragon mission was October 2012 in Expedition 33, uh, met by Sonny Yuri Inaki. And uh, so thanks go out to our hardworking partners at SpaceX at the end of this first of many chapters together. Copy and concur. Congratulations to the SpaceX team and the teams all around the world for a successful uh, Dragon mission over the last month and uh, wrapping up Expedition 62. Looking forward to the Soyuz arrival and day. As are we. It'll be nice to get some more folks up there with you. Brandon, if you have uh, anything else for me, I'll get into my cleanup steps here and, um, and my timeline. 
So we are outside the keep out sphere, but not quite outside the approach ellipsoid. So if you could continue monitoring and we'll release you soon. That was Capsule Communicator Brandon Lloyd speaking with NASA astronaut Andrew Morgan aboard the International Space Station, commemorating the end of the CRS-1 contract for the SpaceX team. Dragon is now outside the keep-out sphere, that 200-meter uh, radius around the International Space Station, and it's making its way toward the approach ellipsoid, that one by one kilometer by one kilometer by two kilometer ellipsoid around station. Obviously, this graphic not to scale, but that helps the team uh, monitor the spacecraft as they arrive and depart. The International Space Station and Dragon now flying about 268 statute miles over the Tasman Sea. Dragon completed its three small departure burns successfully, and the next major burn for Dragon will be the deorbit burn, scheduled to occur at 12.58 p.m. Central Time today and adding 111 meters per second velocity to the vehicle. We've got a couple of Ask NASA questions on Twitter, one from Simon asking if we will be broadcasting the splashdown later today. We will not, and Michael, uh, Michael Burton, we will not be uh, broadcasting the recovery either, but you can keep up with those updates on our blog at nasa.gov slash station. Drew, Dragon is now outside the approach ellipsoid and on a safe 24-hour free drift trajectory. So your go for your last three activities. Uh, thanks for sleep shifting with Orbit 1 tonight. It's my pleasure. As you just heard Capcom Brandon Lloyd relaying to NASA astronaut Andrew Morgan, spacecraft uh, is now outside of the approach ellipsoid. That means the joint operations between NASA and SpaceX have, com have concluded. So full responsibility for the vehicle is handed back to the SpaceX flight control team in Hawthorne, California.
Now that Dragon is outside of the approach ellipsoid, it is deemed 24 hours safe, meaning that if somehow control was lost of the vehicle, we know that it would be 24 hours safe from coming into any contact with the International Space Station. Dragon launched on March 6, 2020 and arrived on March 9th, and today we see SpaceX Dragon's 20th resupply mission and the end of the CRS-1 contract come to an end on April 7, 2020, with an 8.06 a.m. Central Time release of the spacecraft as the space station was flying east of Vietnam. Dragon successfully completed its three small departure burns and made its way outside of the keep-out sphere as well as the approach ellipsoid, ending those joint operations between the NASA and SpaceX team. Next up for Dragon, it will complete its deorbit burn scheduled for 12.58 p.m. Central Time today. Later on, we'll see Dragon splashdown scheduled for 1.50 p.m. Central Time this afternoon, its last splashdown in the Pacific Ocean off the coast of Long Beach, California. Later this week, we've got a busy week, uh, next couple of weeks actually, for, uh, for events for the International Space Station. And on April 9th, just two days from now, we will see the next launch of a crew to the International Space Station. That will be at 2 a.m. Central Time, 3 a.m. Eastern Time. Soyuz MS-16 crew will begin Expedition 63. Crew members Chris Cassidy, Anatoly Ivanishin, and Ivan Wagner will join our three current orbiting crew members aboard the International Space Station. We hope you'll join us for that coverage beginning at 2 a.m. Central Time, 3 a.m. Eastern Time this Thursday, April 9th. That wraps up today's coverage for the SpaceX Dragon on its 20th resupply mission to the International Space Station, also coming to an end of the CRS-1 contract. We're looking forward to big things with the CRS-2 contract with SpaceX and with all of our upcoming events. This is Mission Control Houston.